Friends, good evening and welcome to another live stream of SPTV News Live. Today, a little bit of, um, this isn't a joyous video to make, but um, one of my friends, good friends in the Scientology cult was named Jason Doring. He might be best known to people for playing the role of Logan Eccles on Veronica Mars and Twilight or something like that. His dad passed away yesterday at an early age, and he was an elite, high-level Scientologist. There's kind of two reasons I wanted to say something about this. One, there's a lot of, um, just with the Danny Masterson stuff that we've been covering, there's a lot of names and people that I used to run with that have been really um, affecting me in ways that I didn't know that it would. And now Jason's father dies, and it just reminds me, pulls me back to when we used to be friends, the famous line, that opens up in a song uh, on Veronica Mars. So if Jason was ever gonna watch this video, I would say, do you remember when we used to be friends, Jason? Um, I've said in a previous video, I don't, I hate to say this, but I don't think he has a chance in hell unless something really bad happens. And perhaps Doug, his father passing, might be an impetus for that, but he's so indoctrinated in Scientology. He's so a second generation Scientologist that I think he would have a very difficult time getting out. Now we've covered him on season two, episode four of the Raising a Secret Society series, where I go into detail about Jason, my background with him and his family, um, called Famous Phonies. So I'm not gonna repeat everything, but it's bittersweet because I both, you know, would love to talk to Jason again. That would be amazing. At the same time, um, I feel bad for him because today I would imagine or over the ensuing weeks, the way that they would handle, um, the way Jason might handle the passing of his dad is either get more immersed in Scientology, get some Scientology counseling or auditing to get off the grief charge, or this can sometimes be an opportunity, a great loss or something bad that happens. Sometimes Scientologists can pull away and that can be a time to actually start reflecting, have the critical thinking reboot, so it's actually an opportunity um, for Jason possibly to reassess, but I don't live his life or whatever. Like I said, I knew him all these years ago, so I don't wanna, um, I wanna be gentle because I feel really bad for him. My dad just passed as an OT8. That's the level that Doug Doring was at. And my dad passed too young and so did Jason's. And he just passed a few months ago, which I still have yet to process. So wherever Jason is, I definitely feel for him. By the way, guys, if you have any questions, please leave them uh, as mentioned below with some question marks or comments and we'll throw them up. This is an interactive stream, but I do want to go through, this is kind of a warning video. This is to show you an example of how elite, rich, high-level Scientologists, unbeknownst to the general public, through business or other front groups, can actually insinuate themselves into your child's home without the general public actually being aware of that. So let me get into a little bio of Doug Doring, and we're gonna work through several clips and I'm gonna read you some stuff, but let's, um, let's just start at the beginning here, shall we? So Doug Doring was the founder, CEO, and executive chairman of Age of Learning, the EDT tech company, sorry, the Ed tech company that created and runs abcmouse.com, early learning. That's the important part there. Age of Learning was named Most Innovative EdTech Company by SIIA in the 2023 Cody Awards. Doring was also the chairman of the philanthropic Age of Learning Foundation, a member of UNESCO, Global Education Coalition. Prior to the Age of Learning, Doring founded and served as CEO of Neopets. How many of you knew he was the founder of Neopets as well as ABC Learning? More to be discussed shortly. Also, savvy um, followers of the channel and people that know what's up, they will recognize UNESCO is um, a little shady, shall we say? I'm going to leave a link in the description box as usual for all of this, but let's see. Can we get UNESCO to pop up here? Let's see what their lovely little blurb says that Mr. Doring was a part of. The United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization, also known as UNESCO. It's a specialized agency of the lovely UN aimed at promoting world peace and security through international cooperation in education, arts, sciences, and culture, blah, blah, blah. And like I said, Doug, you know, um, was a multi, multi-millionaire. 
he's given um, millions and millions of dollars to Scientology. And um, this is kind of how the whales work in Scientology. And this is going to jump off of when we talk about his son, how the celebrities like Jason Doring, like his son, are used also to pimp for Scientology. So this is what came out by the CEO yesterday in regards to Doug's passing. So dear team, I'm writing today, today to share some difficult news. Doug passed away peacefully this morning. This is yesterday at 8 a.m. He was at home surrounded by his entire family. When you heard from Doug last week, he was still in the fight. He and his family and doctors threw everything into these past four months, but it was an uphill battle. In very Doug fashion, a few days ago, he elected to stop treatment. And as he put it, quote, move on to his next adventure. Quick comment here. That's very Scientology-esque. Often they don't necessarily value this one lifetime. Eternity always exists. So this is just one adventure. And it says here he's moving on to his next adventure. As always, doing everything on his terms. I saw Doug last week and had a chance to spend an hour with him talking about the company, our products and mission. He asked me lots of detailed questions about the team, our key initiatives and projects as he always had. When I asked him for advice, he paused briefly before expressing full confidence in our ability to carry on his mission. It's what he lived for, the flame that lit him, and that we, that we now carry. Hundreds of us have known and worked with Doug for years, some of us for decades. We can honor the happiness Doug brought to everything in his life, for the legacy he gave us, and for the millions of lives he made better and will continue to make better because he lived. So here we, I just skipped some of this. Um, the family plans a small private service. Separately, we plan to pay a tribute to Doug with a takeover of the Age of Learning website in the coming days. That will be discussed shortly and what happened with them. Um, we want to post stories about him for you, the friends and colleagues he knew and worked with. Please send your anecdotes and memoirs from over the years, the stories that will help the world know more about this incredible person. And then these are Doug's words from the last message that he sent here to the CEO. When I set out to create Age of Learning, the better part of two decades ago, it was to do something about one of the most, if not the most, important problems facing society. I couldn't stand by as kids continue to fall behind, especially at the earliest grade levels. This is very Scientology-esque right here, by the way, my friends. A lot of this is, uh, particularly these next couple lines. The prosperity of our civilization rests on education, and that foundation need he needs help. We're fortunate to have such incredible leaders, including my early crew and so many more exceptional individuals who have joined us along the way. Our mission is to help children everywhere build a strong foundation for academic success and a lifelong love of learning, and we are succeeding. Quick note, I always get a little nervous, um, especially after I show you some of these weird commercials and stuff. Whenever Scientologists get anywhere near or have anything to do with um, kids, not least educating them. Continuing on, my greatest satisfaction in life has been to see tens of millions of kids benefit from our work, to see the trust we have been given by parents and teachers, and to watch a study after study show that we are moving the needle. Would that be the e-meter needle? We are moving the needle in education. We are changing lives. It's no longer a question of whether we are succeeding, but the order of magnitude of our impact. Again, that line is rather Scientology-esque. I look to the day when we can help billions of kids around the world. It's a lofty peak and we won't get there overnight. But with all of us pushing and keeping that mountaintop in sight, we will wake up one day looking out at a world that we have changed for the better. This is my wish and why we are here. With love, Alex. We called the Age of Learning this morning to confirm the news and ask if there was any further memorial information about Doring yet. Quote, we don't have any right now, unfortunately, we were told. For years, we've written about Doug Doring and his wife, Lori, who are major Scientology donors, whales as they call them. Doring is particularly interesting because his company, Age of Learning, operates the ABC Mouse online educational platform that's so popular with the parents of toddlers. Thanks to the success of ABC Mouse, the Dorings have given at least $20 million to Scientology's legal slush fund, the International Association of Scientologists, and another $10 million to funding for the new L. Ron Hubbard Hall in Clearwater, Florida. Stand by, drink of water. And of course, Doug was also the father of Veronica Mars actor Jason Doring, who himself is a Scientologist. Doug, Dor Doug Doring is well known for turning Neopets into a massive su success in the 1990s. Then he founded Age of Learning, which in 2010 launched ABC Mouse. For years now, we pointed out that parents who subscribe to ABC Mouse are helping Doring 
contribute millions to Scientology, but Age of Learning Flax deny it when reporters ask them if it's true. <laughs> That's why it's important to point this out. It's not necessarily running Scientology tech into kids' heads, but it is at the very least, I think it actually is, and let me know what you think when we watch the commercials, but at the very least, it's helping to fund Scientology. What terrible timing for Scientology leader David Miscavige with all that he's dealing with regarding Danny Masterson, Leah Remini's lawsuit, and so much more. The last thing he needed was to lose such reliable funds. Now, this is Jason Doring, his son. He has two um, sets of siblings, um, two sisters that are identical twins, and two brothers that are identical twins. And he happened to um, kind of make it, even though they were all involved in acting at the beginning. Check this out. So he's, it says he's known for Deep Impact. This was the first movie I think he ever did. He had like one line, but he's definitely known for Veronica Mars in 2004 and the movie version of Veronica Mars, the originals, iZombie, etc. And then if you scroll down his IMDb, he has, the last time he worked was in 2021, but this movie, You Are Here, Let's see what comes up when we check that out. That was a little ironic. This is his next film in 2023. At their reunion in Malibu, a young scientist stuns his estranged family with an unusual request after he reveals that he's dying. And here we have William Baldwin, second lead in this movie. And I'm sure we know all about William Baldwin and what's happened with him lately. Now to show my background with Doring, I wanna play you a couple of quick clips from that episode, link in the description box if you want to see all of it, but this will help jump off um, the next piece. Here's how it works in Scientology, okay? Jason Doring is a second generation Scientologist, which means he was born in to a very, very Scientology family. And like mine, even though I didn't get into it till I was nine years old, I still, I guess, would be considered second generation because it's pretty much all I knew and was indoctrinated with and around when I was growing up. So there's a lot of rich people in Scientology. It's basically, one way of putting it is it's a rich man's cult. So Jason's family was well off. My family became well off when they got into Scientology. I'll explain more about why that is as we go along. And there's a very kind of arrogant, snobby, con friendship is conditional, love is conditional. And this all has to do with the Scientology indoctrination. The cult and the secret society comes first and foremost before everything else, including listening to government, listening to authority or any other thing. I'm not saying I'm for government or authority. I'm just saying that you have to understand that these secret societies, the Freemasons and all the other ones as well, not just Scientology, their allegiance is to the cult first and foremost and everything else goes second. So I thought me and Jason were friends. I really like the guy. I still like him, but I would, I, he definitely wouldn't like me. He would know I'm a suppressive person. And I wouldn't really want to hang around any Scientologist anymore, to be honest with you, because the friendship was conditional. I remember he introduced me once, dude, when I was, uh, he was opening the car door and we were going to go on a trip somewhere. And rather than say my name to this new person I was meeting, he list, he listed off my statistics. He's OT3, class two auditor, et cetera, et cetera. And then he said my name, meaning I had to have the correct status in the church and I had to have my ethics in in order to kind of hang around him or be invited to, you know, his his house. And it was all very freaking snobby. I don't think he knew he was doing that. He wasn't a bad guy. It's just God damn it. This was shot two years ago, man. I feel bad playing this, but this is just how I feel, man. Like I said, I feel torn. Um, let me just jump in here for a second. I do constantly feel torn. There's like two things going on at the same time because I used to be under the same mind control. I used to be under the same spell, so I'm no better than they are. But I do know that the hatred that Jason would have for me, he knows I'm declared an SP. I talked about our falling out and everything, but we were really close. There was the three amigos. That was me, Jason Doring, and Nick Lashaway. I probably should say real quick how we met. So around 2000, I got into Bobby Lyon's acting class, which we talked about a lot. Laura Prepon, Jordan and Alana Masterson, and Jason Doring were some of the Scientology celebrities that were in that class. And they were, o not all of them, Laura wasn't, but Jason was an OT. He was the youngest people to actually get on OT7, 
which is the second to the highest level that you can get to in his early 20s. He, um, well, I think I'm going to talk about it in the video here, but I just wanted to give some background that me, him, and Nick Lashaway were really close. We were super dedicated actors um, in Bobby's class. I was motivated by Jason, who was constantly telling me, dude, you need to get up to the OT levels. You don't know what's missing, even though it's just more and more body thetans. That would have been nice if he fucking told me that. But I looked up to Jason, man. He had a career. He, when he got on Veronica Mars, he didn't get a big ego. Me and Nick, who was also having a career, were um, really good friends. He was quite humble, but he um, he's so locked into Scientology, the chances of, of him getting out are probably fairly minimal. Let's carry on was first and foremost a Scientologist and your ethics and your case level, how high you were up on the bridge needed to be in there before you could really be invited to be his close friend or whatever. Me and Nick used to snicker about this shit too, by the way, because it was always me and Nick. We were kind of the rebels in Scientology. He actually contributed to helping me get out I of it. I just want to say something real quick. This is Nick Lashaway, RIP to him, um, as well as Doug Doring. Nick tried to get out of the cult um, and break away from the cult and his family, he kind of lost his mind and he died, um, burning in a terrible car accident. And I believe that was part of the trauma, um, and the PTSD that he was experiencing that he was unable to deal with. Now it was a car accident, of course, but he had other things that were happening, which were very difficult for him to deal with. He was going to be a huge, huge actor. He was a massive talent. And like I said, he was one of the friends with the three amigos, me, Jason, and Nick, I really, really miss that fucking guy, man. He died in 2016. It subconsciously before I really got out of it. I love that motherfucker. And we sometimes would snicker about Jason because he was a very by the book Scientologist. He worked his ass off at the acting craft. He worked his ass off um, in Scientology itself while he was shooting Veronica Mars out in San Diego. He was also signed a, a staff contract so he would go fucking work like at nights on weekends whenever he had spare time to go sell Scientology. I mean, he's a very dedicated person in every area of his life. But I would say, my opinion is, that came from him wanting to be like Tom Cruise, wanting to be like that celebrity Scientologist that just seems to have everything going for themselves on the outside. I would venture to say and there was a conversation. Can I just say something real quick? I'm going to take up the comments and stuff that you're saying. Um, Jenna, this guy, Tony, is talking about Doug Doring. So please don't tell him to go away. Sorry, Tony. Tony says, Tony's been talking about his experience with Doug, which I'm going to bring up on the comments here after we played this video. But Tony, that's interesting. If you wanted to come on and share some information to help warn people of the various front groups, and it sounds like you had personal experience with Doug Doring, please let me know. He said, Tony says, Doug also lied during a wise. We're going to get to that shortly. That's one of their front groups. Wise arbitration in order to steal thousands of dollars from a coworker of mine. That sucks, Tony. We're going to get into a lawsuit that was filed against them where they were sued for and had to cough over $10 million. Um, let me know if you know about that, Tony, and we'll bring up some more of your comments as we carry on. Thanks for that, ma'am. Sorry that happened to you. We had one night. It's the only time you ever actually opened up. I realized in that conversation, I don't personally think he's happy whatsoever. I think it's all a front and deep down he's dying inside, which truth be told, that's how all Scientologists would be feeling. I didn't know I was living a lie for my whole life, but when I look back at it, that sadness that I had subconsciously, that anger, all of the things and emotions that I couldn't make sense of, almost 100% of that came from my indoctrination in a cult. Because when that was gone, I don't feel that way at all anymore. So that's the proof of that. Anyways, everything was conditional with not just Jason and the other celebrities, and particularly the celebrities, but in Scientology in general, just like with my own family, friendships and love uh, are all conditional. Okay, I don't want to get too deep here. Like I said, link in the description box for this full video, but I wanted to start getting into the front groups that Tony was just talking about and go deeper into that. So here's... Um, this was shot two years ago, and this is what I said about the aforementioned wise and more info about how um, kind of Doug Doring's businesses worked. Stand by. I didn't share that. Okay, let me take this back a little bit. Up one day, it would, my guess is it'd be a very dramatic experience if that ever happens. And one other thing to say about 
Jason and his family because it kind of typifies my family and this, a lot of Scientology families in general. I mentioned earlier that it's on one level, it's a rich man's cult. On another level, if you don't have any money, they'll throw you into the Sea Org, have you sign a billion year contract, and you'll be a slave for the rest of your life um, under their bullshit. So, but in general, it's a rich man's cult. So, you know, Doring's, Jason Doring's father, Doug Doring, was one of the founders of the famous uh, website called Neopets. What Powell and Williams hadn't known when they sold Neopets was that Doug Doring was a Scientologist, and this manifested in minor ways. Williams would later state that, quote, the company was structured like a Scientology org. We also had a lot of obscure celebrities coming round the office for tours. Perhaps most concerning to them was when Doring strongly proposed adding Scientology education to the site itself. The way it works okay, is... Okay, so si that's ABC Mouse. Again, there's a whole history behind that that's really long, sorted, and fascinating. And I guess we'll get into a little bit of it, but always check the description box. I found a 16-minute video, which we'll play a little piece of, that will give you a quick deep dive into Neopets. But that ended in two... So Doug Doring started that and founded it in 1999. Again, it's a long story. And then in 2005, let's just say he quit. And then he moved on to something called ABC Mouse, which is this innocent looking website. Would you send your children here? By the way, how many out there? Let me know. Put a one in the chat if you actually have a kid that um, is on uh, ABC Mouse, also known as the Age of Learning. And they make it look like this innocuous um, site and like I said, I don't think that they preach Scientology tech, although if you know what to look for, they do do gradients. Um, they do want to hit education and they definitely snuck Scientology into Neopets. And also, just like classic Scientology, if you want to get your freaking money back, like you're going to see this lawsuit that they lost. If you want to get your freaking money back from ABC Mouse slash The Age of Learning, they make it absolutely impossible and send you on this whole click fucking search to like try to cancel. You ever been on a website where you can't figure out how to cancel and they always make that impossible? Well, they took it to a new level where it actually cost them 10 million freaking dollars. But that's the innocent looking, um, that's the innocent looking website. And then um, let's watch a quick video that shows the basics of um, why it's kind of dangerous. So check this out. I'm going to just play it and then pause it as we go and read it off to you. How is ABC Mouse helping Scientology stay in business? ABCMouse.com, Early Learning Academy is the popular program for toddlers. Notice Scientology always seems to target children. It helps them learn to read and write. It was launched in 2010 by a private company in Glendale, California, named FYI, Glendale, California is right outside of Los Angeles slash Hollywood, and there's tons of rich Scientologists that live in Glendale. Age of Learning is what it was called. Age of Learning and ABC Mouse are the creation of a man named Doug Doring. Doring had made a fortune, um, had earlier made a fortune on Neopets. On Kamars. To say that the Doring family are ardent Scientologists is an understatement. They really are a perfect example of elite public Scientologists, the whales, and um, they're super Scientologists. Last year, Doug and his wife, Lori, were recognized for donating a total of $20 million to the church. All for nothing, by the way. It's simply an award to give to the IAS, or International Association of Scientologists. That's their defense fund. Um, and they just get a trophy in exchange for the 20 mil. 
They were given a huge trophy. Would you pay $20 million for that? I mean, it's not bad, but it's a little high priced. But maybe it's worth it if you get the title Patron Excalibur. ABC Mouse doesn't itself promote Scientology. However, its television ads are made by Scientology filmmakers. Interesting. I wonder if Mitch Brisker actually made some of these commercials. I'll show them to you shortly. The ads bear an uncanny, uncanny resemblance. The commercials that Scientology runs each year during the Super Bowl. Interesting. Now, Mitch Brisker, Scientology director, he did the Super Bowl, so I'll have to ask him if he actually freaking directed these things. Well, Los Angeles Times estimated that 1 million American families pay about $80 a year for the ABC mouse service. I saw earlier that someone said that Doring was, um, Doug Doring was inflating the numbers and undoubtedly that's true but here it is the los angeles times estimated that one million american families pay eighty dollars a year that's eighty million dollars a year that this company is bringing in just off that only a few families have donated more than the dorings to keep the churches sorry to keep the church of scientology going That's from the underground bunker link in the description box. If you'd like to see more about that. Now let's look at one of their creepy ass commercials. Tell me that if you doesn't, if you don't think this looks like a Scientology commercial, this one actually isn't that bad, but, um, I'm going to show you one that's, that's quite creepy. So let's check this one out first. This video was put out by angry gay Pope and it says abcmouse.com ad looks like Scientology because it is. Once upon a time, there was a little boy named Jack. Today, I discovered that reading is an adventure. Once upon a time, there was a young boy that always dreamed of being a knight. And that stories can take us anywhere. Opening up new worlds and making even our wildest dreams real. But the greatest stories of all are the ones you share. We never know where learning will lead, but we know where it begins. ABC Mouse. Ah, uh, I don't like seeing the kids, man. There's something, if you, that one definitely looks like Scientology-esque. Um, here's one that's uh, a lot creepier. And you know, <clears throat> say what you will, but their PR department's pretty good because this is a very powerful commercial. If you don't know what they're about, the jingle and everything, I could definitely see how this would pull in um, unsuspecting parents that where this looks like an amazing thing. Stand by, let me pull it up. Looks like some MK Ultra Illuminati commercial and shit. I don't know. There's something very hypnotic and there's a lot of symbols and shit in here, but man, it's it's already pulling me in. It's pretty powerful, as lame as it is. Shit, man. What do you guys think of that? One thing that can be said about Scientology and why it's gotten so far 
is L. Ron Hubbard said, it's a PR world, meaning it's a public relations world, and they're masters at advertising, manipulating the minds of people, obviously, because they're an incredibly complex mind control cult, and they definitely know how to make um, hypnotic, powerful videos, even if they're cheesy, like the Super Bowl ad. I wonder if they're not putting brain implants in you somehow. I mean, there's something off about these fucking commercials. I want to take up some pinned comments here real quick as we go before we get into, um, well, I'm going to show you. So after seeing that, you know, I'm going to show you the suit where they were sued for 20 million for doing very Scientology esque stuff. But before that, let me, um, let me pull up some comments here that I have pinned. Stand by please. Tony, Doug Doring, and LRH's son-in-law, Guy White, stole the huge commission from me, which prompted me to resign. No shit, um, Tony, did you, did you work with Doug Doring at uh, Neopets or ABC Mouse? Doug, that's Doug Doring, not me, don't attack him. Doug made huge profits on market research studies and pretty much kept all the profit. Thanks for the info, man. Email, if, email me, my man, if you want to um, come on or something and chat more about that. Because it's good to warn people about this. Jenna, how are you doing, my friend? The problem is he's lying about the tens of millions of kids. It's just not there. It's just not true. Yeah, it seemed like um, one million kids. But who knows if that's cumulative. I know that ABC Mouse is not a small company. I mean, they're with UNESCO and, and everything. Jenna, the pro okay, got that one. Thank you, Jenna. Tony, I'm not sure if we covered this already. I was an employee at the Doring Company. Okay, thank you. I delivered their marketing studies to car dealers all over the U.S. Very interesting, my friend. Jenna, a long time ago. Yeah, exactly. This is a song from fucking... Um, I still hear it and watch reruns of Veronica Mars. This is a good fucking show, man. And Jason was a really good actor. And this was the song, A Long Time Ago. We used to be friends, but I haven't thought of you lately at all. If I ever... If shit, if ever again, a greeting I send to you short and sweet to the soul, I need you to space out your shit here, Jenna. It's hard to read, man. It's already small. Anyways, I intend just remember me when you're good to go. Jason, if you ever happen to run across this video five years from now, that's my statement. Remember when we used to be friends? If you ever leave, I'm just an email and a phone call away. Philosophy is this education company based on LRH tech. Not exactly. But in the lawsuit, I'll show you how they use his LRH's tech to scam people and not being able to cancel. Um, that is directly learned. There, I think that there is. I looked at it a little bit, philosophy. Like, check out the videos that I'm going to leave in the in the description box that go into more detail. But I do think there's some Scientology esque shit hidden in there that's not super obvious. There definitely was a Neopet. So I'm going to show you something on that before we roll out of here. Almost done with these, and we'll show you the lawsuit filed against them. Yeah, exactly, philosophy. Go to the head of the class. UNESCO was founded by Julian Huxley, a known supporter of eugenics, and we covered Aldous Huxley's involvement in Dianetics and Scientology a few weeks ago um, on a video going more into um, that. Tony, Doug also lied during a white... Yes, I think we covered that, my friend. Manifest. Life by design. Please like, share, subscribe to their channel. I don't know who you are, but sounds pretty cool. Do you think of do you think any of them were narcissists? This being the Scientologist, right? Or in general, not just during or specifically during. If not, they still have an opportunity to snap out of it. If narcissists, it could suit them. Great point, man. Again, go to the head of the class. That's why I don't think Tom Cruise could ever leave. I think he's a psychopath and I think he benefits from it. And only if it hurt him specifically would he sneak out the back door. But I could never see him saying, Holy shit, I was conned. I got to get my daughter Suri back. If you're a narcissist, like you just said, manifest, yeah, they, they're they either stuck in there permanently or they'll slide out the back door, maybe like Laura Propon did. I'm not saying she's a narcissist, but I'm just saying <clears throat> you would never come forward and take responsibility because if we know, narcissists can't. I don't, I do not think Jason is a narcissist. He's trapped. He's second generation. His parents couldn't be any more hardcore. And they, and they pay for their bridge. They're super rich. So these kids only know Scientology. And Jason was one of the most dedicated Scientologists I've ever known. As mentioned in that previous clip, when he was working on Veronica Mars, he freaking signed a staff contract 
which is unheard of for a celebrity. You can't really do that. But he was very dedicated to getting people up the bridge. And he's a decent guy. I really believe that. He he acted narcissistic because they make us into narcissists in Scientology, generally speaking. So he could be cold and we had a bad falling out. But if he ever woke up, I think he can because he's not a narcissist. Miss Mercy, how are you? It's absolute insanity. The roots of Scientology, the root Scientology has in so many things, man. It continues to blow me away. Great fucking point. This is a group that has 30,000 members, maybe 25,000 members, give or take. And their heyday, that they, ha they had 100,000 plus in the 80s. So even then, with this small group, it's amazing how much they've probably done more than the Moonies, which have millions of members. It's incredible. I would suggest because they operate more like an intelligence agency, they're really wired on um, how to safe point people, which we're going to cover in the video that jumps off of this clip I'm going to show you at the end of this broadcast with Jason Doring. They're just, um, as I said, extremely well oiled to have such a small group do all these incredible things. It's like a, a virus that spreads. You don't need much, but it can do a shitload of damage. One more before we get back to this blow drill. What's going down, man? The goal of wise is an ethical, sane, and prosperous civilization. Now, I know you're joking. I know who you are, my friend. That's very funny. That's enough joking and degrading. We're going to have to throw you into ethics. Okay, so let's get back to this. Um, this is what they actually... So this lovely website that looks like this, this is the background actually behind that and how it's scamming people. So just... You guys, I'm going to read it exactly, okay? No commentary. The pattern of white collar criminality. And this is, I just want to say something real quick. This is a good insight, like I said, into a typical elite, rich Scientology family. It's a white, rich man's cult, generally speaking. Of course, they've co opted the nation of Islam, but that's just to make money. In general, you're getting a great insight. This is why Grant Cardone and other rich Scientologists are always getting involved in Ponzi schemes or getting sued and shit, <laughs> allegedly, and then it catches up with them. This is typical because once they believe in a scam like Scientology, they often mimic it in different ways. And I would suggest Doug Doring has been done no different with both Neopets and um, ABC Mouse. So this is the, the lawsuit, the pattern and how it happens. The pattern of white collar criminality by Scientologists continues unabated as Doug and Laura Doring, owners of the Age of Learning, Inc., ABC Mouse, were slammed with a $10 million fine by the U.S. Federal Trade Commission on September 2nd, 2020. The fine was paid to settle charges, here we go, of illegal advertising and billing practices. This is just like Scientology. FTC Commissioner Royhit Chopra was scathing in his condemnation of the Doring sleazy actions to prevent cash-strapped parents from canceling their memberships in ABC Mouse. Stand by, I gotta get a drink of water. Now we've all been through this to some degree, right? On internet sites, but this shit takes it to another level. Continuing on, instead of allowing parents to cancel, the Dorings and their company created a maze that made it virtual, virtually impossible to cancel. The basis of the FTC's enforcement action and fine is that tens of thousands of parents tried to cancel their memberships only to discover that the confusing ABC Mouse website kept them locked in a credit card auto renewal nightmare. This is not funny because I've been through this shit. And it, oh my God, how frustrating. Continuing, bizarrely, some parents who thought they had canceled were misled and actually agreed to a renewal due to the deceptive cancellation instructions on the ABC Mouse website. Such tactics sound just like the Church of Scientology's Byzantine and deceptive refund repayment scheme. The website Dark Patterns describes a roach motel as any online website deliberately designed to make it easy to get in and subscribe, but impossible to get out and cancel your subscription. FTC Commissioner Chopra invoked this term to publicly denounce ABC Mouse as a roach motel. Here's what he said. The ABC Mouse Roach Motel. ABC Mouse was undoubtedly a roach motel. Through the dark patterns detailed in the FTC's complaint, ABC Mouse deployed tricks to lure families into signing up for its service and traps and traps to prevent them from canceling. First, ABC Mouse tricked customers with a 12-month membership offer without disclosing that this membership would automatically renew. 
Instead, the company buried this information in its terms and conditions, which were accessible only if users clicked a hyperlink. Even those families that did click the link would have struggled to learn the truth, which was concealed in small, dense text. Unsurprisingly, these problematic practices prompted tens of thousands of families to file complaints. Typical Scientology fashion again here um, is this. Instead of fixing the user experience, ABC Mouse doubled down on deception by employing a host of mazes and obstacles to prevent families from canceling their membership. Quick comment, yes, that's exactly what science, that's, it's just like trying to leave Scientology if you're on ABC Mouse, apparently. Continuing on, as detailed in the commission's complaints, the company made it difficult for families to know where to start the process by deeply bearing the link to the cancellation path and by frequently refusing to honor cancellation requests initiated through their customer support portal, portal or over the phone. Then, families who tried to cancel through their website were forced to click through a labyrinth of pages, using them not to cancel, urging them not to cancel. In addition to wasting families' time, these pages were riddled with traps, ambiguous menu options that in some cases actually re-enrolled members if they clicked the wrong button. <laughs> Oh, man, most ethical people on the planet, eh? When families complained, ABC Mouse responded by making the site even more deceptive. For example, the commission's complaint detailed how in 2017, ABC Mouse changed its site to make the already buried cancellation policy link less prominent. The trick worked with the company's senior design director reporting that more families were, that more families were abandoning their efforts to cancel. As we have reported, the Church of Scientology makes every effort to get its former members to abandon their repayment request for unspent monies on account. Once a person abandons their efforts to get their money back, they typically forfeit their legal right to pursue the matter in court, and the Church of Scientology told the IRS that its refund slash repayment policy was based upon a meet or abandon basis. And this is a Scientology little policy here. Number five, CVB account. Amounts are deposited in this account whenever a parishioner demands the return of a fixed donation and are kept until the demand is abandoned or met. CVP stands for Claims Verification Board, a body of Church of Scientology International, which passes upon the validity of such claims. In other words, it's absolutely impossible to actually um, get your money back in Scientology. They make it very difficult, but very easy to pay. Pay now and get spiritual freedom later. Continuing on, Scientology has made it virtually impossible for former members to get unspent monies on account back. The church will run former members in circles for years until these people give up and abandon their claims. This allows Scientology to keep their money without having delivered any services. L. Ron Hubbard himself wrote of this practice. First, consider a group which takes in money but does not deliver anything in exchange. This is called ripoff. It is the exchange condition of robbers, taxmen, governments, other criminal elements, and of course, I'm not adding this here, the Church of Scientology. The Dorings and ABC Mouse appear to have gauged in these same obstructionist tactics to enrich themselves at the expense of hardworking parents, and for this, the Dorings have been fined. $10 million publicly. Now, as if that fraud wasn't bad enough, how many of you out there had kids or maybe yourself? I mean, perhaps older people were into Neopets. I don't know much about it. One in the chat, if you ever subscribed to Neopets, don't be ashamed. It's okay. You didn't know it was a Scientology front group. Kind of. Two in the chat, um, if you have not, you don't know what the hell ABC Mouse, or I'm sorry, the, uh, Neopets is. So, we're getting close to the end here. A couple more things I want to show you. But like I said, I'm going to leave in the description box this little 16-minute documentary because it does a really good deep dive because it's not easy to explain the Neopets slash Scientology scam. But here's a brief intro to it. And so we are. The majority shareholder of Neopets in 2000 was indeed a Scientologist. And not just a casual member of the church, but someone that's donated millions upon millions of dollars over his lifetime. But what did that mean for the site itself? Did Scientology ever have a genu Stand by. genuine impact on Neopets? I asked Adam and Donna about the moment they first realized who they were in business with. I just want to translate real quick. They're talking about um, even the co-owners of Neopets were snowed and they had to find out the hard way just how much Doug Doring and other Scientologists were um, adding and infiltrating Scientology into Neopets. I think it was like the interview questions, wasn't it? Yeah, there was some, there was some weirdness, so, because every time an uh, interview came in, they had to do this personality test thing, with El, copyright Elrond Hubbard at the bottom. Right. So we started probably not Googling in, in the day, but like Alta Vista or Lycosing, to find out more 
information. <laughs> and then we found this kind of the Scientology website, and we're like, oh, Doug Doring, okay, he's a Scientologist. And then we found every single member of staff they had, all Scientologists. Right. So we're like, hmm, it's a bit weird. And, and we, we, then we started sort of reading more about it, we're like, oh my god, what we've done. To begin with, I'm told, Adam and Donna remained almost entirely in charge of the site's creative direction, although Doring and his board would become more involved as they pushed for something called immersive advertising, a term they would go on to trademark. Unlike the advertising you may have watched before this video, although looking at our stats, you, you probably didn't, immersive advertising was meant to blur the distinction between a site's content and the advertisement itself. Players would suddenly find themselves visiting the in-game Disney theatre with their Neopet before heading over to the McDonald's shop for a spot of lunch. And critics argued that this was an unethical way of advertising products, particularly so when the average age of the player base was so low. But Again, they're after kids and stuff. I just wanted to um, make sure the volume's up. Okay. It feels a bit of a stretch to blame that form of advertising on Scientology, doesn't it? I guess we have to point the finger at, I don't know, capitalism there. But that's not to say there was not some internal conflict over the years. There was one, in, there was one situation, but it never saw the light of day because we killed it with fire. Basically. So they brought over this lady called Janine or something, I can't remember her name. And uh, she was a Scientologist and her job, she was brought in as head of education or learning yeah, at, at Neopets and she her job was basically to use L1 Hubbard's educational thing and put it right. on the site and basically teach kids about Scientology and we went <laughs> ape shit. Yeah. This idea never reached the site but I was told about one obscure reference to Scientology which you can still find on Neopets today. Following the acquisition in 2000 the Neopets office was based out of California and it wouldn't be all that uncommon to be sat there working at your desk and to glance up and see someone from the board giving a tour. This might include the odd celebrity face like actress Callie Preston who made a couple of appearances over the years, but apparently there was a group of free Scientologists that made a real lasting impression on the- He just made a good point. We're going to show you, like I said, when we get into the Celebrity Center Christmas stories and how they save point, I'm going to show you a quick clip at the end featuring Doring. They're celebrities. I'm sure it's no surprise to anybody. They really do use them to the max to get people in their pockets. And that actually appertains to Marty Rathbun helping to cover up and get the verdict um, change for, for the cover up of Lisa McPherson, which we're going to go into when we go into Marty Rathbun's deposition, not the videos, but what he actually writes and how Michelle Stafford was used, you know, because people get starry eyed, you know, politicians want to meet their favorite soap star like Michelle. Maybe you want to meet John Travolta. Maybe you want to meet Doring. It's incredible how something so simple like just pimping a celebrity out to a politician or something can get shit done. The team. I remember once these three, uh, like the three people came in and they weren't really introduced and they just looked evil, you know, like the bad guys <laughs> in Superman 2, you know? <laughs> right. um, so we actually- we These act fucking Brits are hilarious, dude. This is their own company that they're just taking the piss out of Scientology. I want to take it back and hear it again. Apparently, there was a group of free Scientologists that made a real lasting impression on the team. I remember once these three, uh, like the three people came in and they weren't really introduced and they just looked evil, you know, like the bad guys <laughs> in Superman 2, you know? <laughs> right. um, so we actually, we, we, we started making characters on the site about these random people who came around the office. <laughs> the three. The three. And it was just like, <laughs> and the artists were in on the joke as well. They were like, yeah, this is, you know, those guys that came in, those are gonna be bad guys now. Uh, <laughs> In June 2005, Neopets was acquired once again. Doring and the Board of Investors agreed to sell their company to Viacom for $160 million, and here ended the link between the site and the Church of Scientology. This was also a goodbye for Adam and Donna, who sold their shares too, and then moved on to new projects. But this wasn't- Wait, there might be more. Not the last the pair would hear from the church, it turned out. Shortly after the sale, both Adam and Donna were invited to visit the Los Angeles Scientology Celebrity Center. So, he so after he sold it for $160 million and they're sus on Scientology, of course, they have to try to recruit him and get him down to just have some chicken and a nice dinner down at the Celebrity Center. <laughs> Scientology Celebrity Center. Here, they were introduced to Nancy Cartwright, who you might know better as the voice of Bart Simpson, and then offered a full tour of the center and its facilities. This is after the sale. They didn't the do sale. anything while we were working there. Right. As soon as we had the money, they were like, oh, let's okay. get <laughs> They were trying to take us to the Elrod Hubbard's office. And we were like, oh, no, right. we got to go. And we just ran to the cars. Well, is, that, is that like a, is there a procedure to like have they try and introduce you to that? Is I that, think so. Yeah, I think we got the 
you've got money, this is the way, because they right. took us to some fancy dinner there. So you, <laughs> just just there. say we freaked out, might be out on the office in honor of the man himself. It stands as a permanent representation that this church is committed to upholding his legacy for the benefit of the millions who live and work here. And that's the new Church of Scientology of Los Angeles. Okay, wow, holy shit. <laughs> Chow, it's chicken because it's the most innocuous food I can think of. It's just trying to make a little sarcastic joke about, you know, what's the most, you know, non-threatening way to get people down to Scientology that are going to be freaked out about it. They take them to the celebrity center. They have a really nice dining area. And I just throw chicken out there. Um, but I'm sure they have a lot better shit than chicken. Um, okay, so I just it's been a while, my friends. It's been about two weeks since I gave a shout out to the people that are kind enough to um, support the channel in the way of the Kofi. Just wanted to give a quick shout out to that. Want to show you the shirt that I'm wearing as one young Kelly Copter gave this to me for free. I got to show you this fucking shirt. But first off, let me just give a quick shout out because it's been a while. Um, and then I will end off with during the safe pointing and what goes down at Celebrity Center. I swear, if they just shut down Celebrity Center alone in Los Angeles, so much I feel of Scientology's network, not least the celebrities and all the connections they have to the police, the politicians, et cetera, and using their star power, just getting rid of Celebrity Center would be a, would be one small step, whatever the fuck the moon quote is. Anyway, so thank you to the following people for the last two weeks. Um, Shan, I appreciate your passion and vulnerability. Your deep dives provide insight that would otherwise not be known. Keep it up. God bless. Thanks, Shan. God bless you too. Philosophy, always a regular contributor. Thank you. And here in the chat, Miss Behaven, Lindsay, and Blue Sky Gal. Thank you. Um, Miss Behaven became a member, blah, blah, blah. Um, guys, like the membership and throwing a coffee is just a way to support. You don't have to. Um, just if you want to, but I don't really have any perks to offer because it's just enough to keep up with the content. Someday I'll, when I'm figure it out, I'll probably set up like more a Patreon type thing and offer people shit, but I really appreciate it. Even though I'm not really offering anything blue sky gal contributes constantly. Thank you. This somebody is Linda Ford. Much appreciated. My friend, Marilyn, that's probably Marilyn Honeg, JB, Sandy care for JC. Always good to see you blue sky gal again. The suppressive pups, awesome moniker. Eight points, always in the house. No, Nami46 became a member eight days ago. Thank you, my friend. Carrie, Linda Ford, again. Blue Sky Gal, please give it a rest, man. Too much, too much love. And Karen, 15 days ago, thank you for that. Now, I just wanted to show you this freaking thing that Kelly Copter got me. This is the only SP merchandise I have. And she actually gave me the freaking thing for free. And it's an OT3 um jacket that's the highest level i got up to so what are you trying to do kelly like trigger me every time i wear this no i will wear this out i promise my friend it's cool so check this out can you can you see um we've got let me i can't speak and, and show it at the same time so there it is um xenu saturn the ice cube incident those familiar with ot3 will know what that is as well as the planes and we have, of course, the fucking volcano. That's fucking badass, Kelly. I really appreciate that. She didn't put me up to this, but if you want to see her merch, I will um, definitely link her in the description box. And she did a really fucking powerful interview on the channel a couple days ago, and she's a very sweet um, lady. Okay, so Jason, I know Jason will never see this video. Maybe one day it'll just appear in his algorithm. He won't shut down because he's like, fuck Doug and fuck Scientology. My friend, the link's in the description box. If you ever want to reach out, I wish we could be friends again, uh, as you said from Veronica Mars. That's really fucking corny, dude. I know he's not going to um, wake up, but I do wish him the best, and I really feel dad, bad that his dad passed. I know exactly what that feels like. I just hope that Scientology's not vulturing his ass, and maybe, maybe he's taking this time to back away and reassess rather than go get a session, which will throw you right back into the trance. <laughs> So as mentioned previously, um, I'm going to do a video that jumps off of, and I'm going to do a little copyright test here to make sure that this works. I'm just going to use a little clip because I really want to show you how the Danny Masterson sexual assault, the suicides made to look like murders that we've covered on the channel 
many of them, and there's more to come. How the fuck did they get away with all this shit? How did they do it? That's the important point. We've covered their front groups today with high-powered elite Scientologists, but I want to show you how these celebrities, people like Jason Doring, and what happened with the Masterson case, just to summarize it, so we have tools going forward and what to look out for. They're a very nefarious, well-oiled machine in safe pointing. So part of that is the Scientology Celebrity Center here in Los Angeles, where they raise money for the Los Angeles Police Department, among other uh, groups, in which to, it's just as simple as, hey, if we give you money, if we scratch your back, you'll scratch our back. Unless you have some freaking integrity. Most people in this world, I found out, like I said in previous videos, can be bought off for basically 50 bucks in a fucking sandwich. So note to YouTube, this is fucking fair use as far as I consider it. I throw in a little sarcastic clips or whatever. It's for educational purposes. This is not cyberbullying anybody. And I believe that I have a right to use this. I just wanted to say that for the algorithm bots. So let's kind of end off with this. And like I said, this will jump off and appertain to really doing a deep dive video on how the hell this shit works. So here's Jenna Elfman, who I don't know if she is today. I know she's still a Scientologist, but when I knew her, she was the most hardcore biachi Scientologist, most dedicated, even more than fucking Jason, dude. Jason was tolerable. Jenna is just so fanatical, it's scary. So here she is back in the day, introducing this event, kind of talking down to people. And we'll see Jason Doring and Michael Pena pimping out for Scientology to help raise money for the Police Activities League. Stand by, I wanna um, get me off of here and get a good view of this. Gotta switch this. I guess we might as well throw the chat off, my friends. I'll pay attention in here, but let's go a little more full screen. So I'm gonna read this out to you. Safe pointing is part of the Scientology PR, that stands for Public Relations Strategy, for creating a quote, safe operations base within a community. The church concentrates on ingratiating themselves, i.e. slithering in there, ingratiating themselves with influence peddlers, and then the peddlers reach out to the broader community on the church's behalf. It's that simple, but they have an incredible program to do so. By the way, as we go forward, my friends, it's a 10 minute clip with Doring. I think it's gonna drive you mad. Um, you're gonna hear the audience over laugh. One in the chat, if you want me to keep going, but please start throwing up some twos if this starts to grate on you and we'll kick off the clip so you don't have to suffer through the full 10 minutes. And then we'll roll out of here. Thank you very much. It's indeed my honor to welcome you this evening to the 20th anniversary of Christmas Stories. 20 years! My gosh. It's always been one of my favorite Celebrity Center events because of the sheer fun and joy of the evening. And it's for an amazing cause. For 20 years, the show has been a benefit for the Hollywood Police Department's youth programs, for underprivileged and at-risk youth, and for LAPD cadets looking to their future as members of the Los Angeles Police Force. All of these initiatives have one purpose in common, to assist the youth of Hollywood to become competent and productive members of the community. And there's yet another reason we're all here tonight. Part of the proceeds from this evening's show will also benefit the Hollywood Police Support Association's annual toy giveaway and Christmas party. Spread a little cheer to the children and families who otherwise would have no Christmas. So that's what you're helping this evening. So thank you all for coming and enjoy the show. Come on, Bob, just, just let me try it once, please. Sorry, I, I had eyes on mute. I think it's buffering a bit. So let me get a, let me pull you guys back in the chat. Actually, that should be fine. And that's Jason. Actually, let's do this. That's Jason. And that's Michael Pena. One in the, one in the chat. If you find him irritating in this character and the voice he's doing, two in the chat. If you think he's a brilliant actor. No way. No <laughs> way, Teddy. Please, please, I don't see what the big deal is. What's the big deal? You want to play with my hammer? So? So, last time I let you play with one of my tools, you almost popped your eye off. That was an accident! It was a total fluke! 
And you cried for an hour. I was surprised, that's it, I swear. Surprised? You were trying to chisel a wall made of Legos, which is the totally wrong thing to do with a screwdriver. Oh, I see, I didn't know it was that sharp, I swear. It'll never happen again. Look at me, I'm serious. Yeah, well, it'll never happen again because I'll never let you use my tools, so you can't have my hammer. Okay, what could I possibly do with a hammer? I don't know, Teddy, maybe claw off one of your eyes? No, no, I'm not going to make the same mistake twice. And plus, studies show that a screwdriver is way more dangerous than him. Is it buffering like a motherfucker, um, Goldie? Was it buffering when I had it in the chat? I'm not really sure why the hell it's doing that today. Um, I'll try this. Thanks for the note, by the way. If it gets really bad, let me know, guys. And we'll save this for uh, another time because there's much more to show you. Um, but let's uh, just do a little bit more of this. I forgot what I threw as the one and twos. So when you want me to stop this, I'll just play the whole thing if you want. But if you want me to stop it, throw some freaking twos in there. I don't want to torture you if I if you're not if you don't want to watch this. But it's also quite a lot of uh, kind of innuendo, sexual innuendo shit and weird shit in here too. Hammers. <laughs> what studies, Teddy? What studies? My studies. And so far, it's screwdrivers one, hammers zero. Forget it. Okay, I wasn't gonna tell you this, but I need your hammer because I'm making you a gift for Christmas. <sighs> you're making me a gift? Yep. What kind of gift are you making, Teddy? I'm not gonna tell you. Yeah. Well. If you're not going to tell me, then you can't get my hammer. So. Oh, you really want to know? You really want to spoil the surprise? Yeah, I do. Okay, okay, great. I'm making you your... Just, your <laughs> just let you know, guys. Like, what the fuck, man? There's tons of these that I have. We got Seth Green, um, uh, Connor Cruz, John Travolta. They're all this ridiculous. So <laughs> let me know, please. I don't want to make you suffer through them in the future video. But there's a lot of... I'll just clip them all together. But there's a whole bunch of actors that are kind of like sideline Scientologists that might surprise you that also do these retar I don't want to say that word, ridiculous um, things at CC. And you notice since most of the people in the crowd are Scientologists, the over laughing or whatever. I don't know, but maybe this shit's funny. Mike, Mike Pena's uh, making a go at it, right? <laughs> oh, Jesus. I'm not sure he'd want this shit out there, man. I, you know, I talked to Jason about, I just want to say something real quick. Jason would always take me to these fucking things because he'd be doing them or whatever. And I'd like sit backstage and get the VIP pass. This is before I actually did start to make it. Then I got invited to the president's office and I fucking like luckily woke up in time. But man, talk about memories. I remember going to all these and I was one of those program Scientologists that was just overlapping and shit. It, it, really, you, you think this shit's fucking funny, man. Sorry, carrying on. A truck. <laughs> Teddy, you can't make a truck with a hammer. What? That's the main tool that they use to make trucks. trucks. So I made it out of metal, Teddy. Hammers you use with wood, okay? You make houses with hammers. Oh, that's right, I'm making you a garage for your truck. I don't have a truck. <laughs> okay, well, at least if you ever get a truck, you already got a garage. Um, I don't think that's a laugh track, my friend, really. You know, I've been at these. It all sounds naturally recorded. Yeah, they do throw in laugh tracks and such on some of their videos, but that sounds pretty natural to me. And it really is like that. Like at any church slash cult, you know, um, gathering, they have a tendency because they're like kind of hypnotized to over laugh and think everything's much funnier than it actually is. I think that's a real laugh laughing. <laughs> Teddy, you really aren't going to make me anything, are you? Huh? Just let me play with your hammer. Come on. <laughs> Let me play with your hammer and the kids, uh, which make up 50% of the audience and their parents are just laughing their silly little asses off. Are some pliers? No. Hop a ranch or something? No. A saw? Let me use the saw! Absolutely not, Teddy. If I give you the saw, the place will be covered in stuffing. It's not fair! You get all the good stuff, I don't get nothing! I know it's buffering. If it's, I don't know why it's doing that. We're doing so good for a while. If it's buffering too bad, let me know. But could you imagine, like, you know, Michael? I think Michael Pena and Doring, you know, they're decent actors, but they have to lower their standards 
And this is not something, shall we say, that their agents would want to use as a demo reel to help get them future acting jobs. You don't get nothing. What do you call a coat of fur? Nothing? You can't build a garage with fur. Plus, I'm serious. It gets hot sometimes. Boy, listen, you're complaining, huh? You're plush. What I wouldn't give to be plush. Plush is stupid. <laughs> look at you, man. Just look at you. You're cut up. Look at those muscles. I don't have those muscles. You're cuddly, okay? I'm not cuddly. You know how many days I wake up and wish I was cuddly? Let me just pause for the uh, copyright reasons. You have to make comments on said video. Yeah, I see what you guys are saying in here. Um, let's carry on and then we'll um, handle some comments real quick and then we'll roll out of here. But yeah, this is really strange to watch. But you haven't seen nothing yet. Like I said, if you guys wanna see these, I'll show you um, the whole slew of celebrities. We got Giovanni Ribisi, we got um, Juliette Lewis, the late um, Kelly Preston, and Kirstie Alley, and they're all moon lunatic batshit. If you think this is bad, wait till you see some of the other ones. Oh, really? How many? <laughs> Teddy, I don't know the exact number, you know, but it's more than, you know, four. Jesus, I just got to say something real quick. Sorry to interrupt. But yeah, Jason, if you ever do run across this video, my bad, dude. I'm not trying to show this to make, you know, to denigrate you or anything. I'm just trying to do a video. But I just realized this is probably in poor taste. But because Jason is a really fucking good actor, man. This is not showing his quality. And he's put up to this man to pimp for the coal. He doesn't even want to fucking do these things, man. Or so. Okay, well, believe me, cuddly is way overrated. First thing you got to consider is the cuddler. Say? Is the cuddler. Like a little Samantha. Well, I would totally wish you, uh, if she cuddled me, oh, I would yeah. love that. Seriously? Yeah. I got one word for her, okay? We're halfway through. I just wanted to let you know, throw two in the chats if you had enough, but you can see it's actually getting more sexual and darker, or is it, is it just me hallucinating? She drools. <laughs> Tell you, that's two words. <laughs> Drooler. Serious? I'm serious. One go cut it with her and you smell like spit for a week. <laughs> Isn't that nice? Well, what, what about Timothy? Oh, good. Two words. Bed wetter. <laughs> okay, Greg, your two is noted and so is Kareen's one. If we start seeing a bunch of twos, we'll cut it off. Just let me know. <laughs> More twos? Are you serious? Yeah, every night it just comes and comes. <laughs> And you know, stuffing takes a long time to dry. Jesus, listen to what they're saying. Maybe we do need to listen to this, my friends. It's We got four more minutes. This is, uh, just want to maybe get video evidence of the shit. Um, but if there's too many, if there's a lot of twos, like I said, I'll shut it down. But uh, I just want to actually hear this. Jeez, I had no idea. Yeah. Oh, remember Linda? Oh, the stuffed dinosaur. Plus, cuddly. Dinosaur, Timothy took her to bed for a week. Yeah? They threw her away. No. Yes. Yikes. I thought she just got put away in a toy chest. No, well, I heard otherwise. The sock monkey said that he saw her tail getting out of the trash can. Wow. What kind of life is that? That's not cool. <laughs> Must be true. Yes. Trust me. You don't want to be cuddling. Wow, Linda, thrown away, huh? Yeah, that's how it is. One day you're sitting up in a bed, propped up with some beautiful pillows, and the next day they're hauling you off to some landfill. So that's why you just gotta just suck it up and just take a chance. Let me show me the hammer. No, Teddy. Come on, didn't you listen to my speech? Yeah. Take a, come on, come on, life is short. Life is not short, Teddy. Look at that Madam Alexander doll over there. She was the grandmother's when she was a little girl. Yeah, but look at her now. She's 60 years old and she didn't sit on herself. She stares at a wall. Miss, there is no storyline going on here. And someone said it's written by pedophiles and it, grooming. Yeah, this is really weird shit. I actually didn't watch this all the way through before showing it. 
Um, but I did watch some of the other ones. I didn't think this one was actually that bad. And maybe I'm just reading into it. But yeah, this is some weird ass shit, man. We're almost done. Well, oh, yeah. <laughs> That's it. And look at mom's Barbie. She's still in the original package. What kind of life is that for a toy? It's hot. <laughs> yeah, who wants to be collectible, huh? All right, Teddy. All right, you can play with my hammer. I can! Look, just promise me. What? Whoa. <laughs> what? I'm gonna be totally careful, I swear! Well, just. Here, don't do anything stupid with that. Oh, okay? I'm totally not gonna do anything stupid! It's heavier than it looks. Yeah. Oh, just feel that handle. Gives it a grip. Yeah. It's a good hammer. Quality. Oh, God, you, you can tell. What, what should I do with the hammer? Well, why don't you just hold it for a minute, Teddy? Get used to it, huh? No, 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 no. Are you kidding me? If I'm gonna play with a hammer, I need to play with a hammer. Do you got some nails? Give it back, Teddy. No, no, no. no. It's it. gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. It's gonna be. I, all I'm gonna do. All I'm gonna do is just. I just. I just hammer the floor. That's it, perfectly safe, perfectly safe, just the floor. Okay. One more minute and 30 seconds. This is, I forgot how bad, it's bad and it's actually kind of disturbing. Ah! 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 What happened? Your hammer almost killed my ball. <laughs> ah! Look, I told you to be careful. I know, but you never said it would hurt. I tried to warn you. You said not to climb, to claw my eyes off. You didn't say anything about bashing my paw. This is incredible. I'm gonna get lose a nail or something. Oh, come on, Teddy. It's not that bad. Look. It's not that bad coming from a construction worker, of course. I have a very low threshold for pain. On a scale from one to ten, it's probably like a 74 or something. Okay, look, I'm just gonna take back the hand. Yeah, absolutely. Those things should come with like warning labels or something. They're terrible. Well, I guess as far as your study goes, at this point, hammers are just as dangerous as screwdrivers, huh? There are more. I'm never going to ask you for anything again, I swear. You serious? Do I look serious? Well, it's a good thing, huh? Because I'm getting a new tool. I just haven't put it on my belt yet. I don't care. Yeah. I really don't care. <laughs> what is it? Come on, drill. what is it? Power drill, power drill. What is it? Power drill. Oh, seriously? Can I play with it, please? It's a power drill. Yeah, man, because according to studies, power drills are way safer than hammers. You huh? took the words right out of my mouth. Let me play with it right now. Jesus, man, I'm sorry. I gotta watch that before playing it. I probably should have just played a clip. That was fucking something else. Wait until you see the one with Danny Masterson, Chris Masterson, and Ashton Kutcher. If you think that had some innuendos in it. <clears throat> I don't wanna just show gross shit, man. So I'll probably just edit a bunch of them together, whatever. Sorry to make you sit through that bullshit. Um, Wendy, thank you for the question marks. It makes it easy to find. Is Michael Pena a cult COS2? Yes, he's been a long time member. I first met him when he tried to steal my girlfriend, uh, Melinda, at the time. I met him in a course room. Apparently, he had the hots for my fucking girlfriend. That's how I met Michael. And uh, he was a newbie. And I'm actually surprised that he took to Scientology. I believe he's married to Bree Schaefer, also wrapped up in the Danny Masterson cover up case. She's part of that. A small click yes he's in cos and hopefully he might be the one one that would be more likely to get out first if you had to pick he would get out before during but he's he's been very dedicated for a long time thanks for that question paula how you doing doug important did you know isaac cappy that's a really i didn't know him but i know who you're talking about 
that is some mysterious shit, man. I mean, the way he died off the bridge and shit, the stuff he was talking about, about, I guess I have to be careful what I say on here, about Tom Hanks and somebody talked about Seth Green. Yeah, if we're going to do a video on that, and I'm kind of heading over there anyways, because I want to do videos along these lines. I know what you're talking about, Paula. We'll have to do those on bit shoot and shit, because once we start using the P word and we bring these pedos up, we're probably not going to last. Those videos aren't going to last long on YouTube, but thanks for bringing that up. Jenna, Doug, I will only ask one more time because maybe you're ignoring me. I'm not ignoring you, Jenna. Like if you put, let me throw up the caption here. Hopefully I don't have to do this every time because I don't want this running across the whole time, but we don't have monetization or super chat. I'm not going to do that. So if you put a question mark, even if you have a comment to say at the end, I'm going to blaze through them. So I shouldn't miss any of your questions in the future. Just please put a few question marks before it so I can pull it out. Um, okay. So, um, ignoring me, I know there is one with Danny and a doll that he drugs. The only one I have is, like I said, there's a scene with Ashton Kutcher, um, Chris Masterson and Danny Masterson. And it's along the lines of the shit he was accused for. And there's one with the whole 70s show doing, um, with all of them, Mila and shit. I don't remember that. Are you talking about a Scientology movie, Jenna? If you wouldn't mind letting me know, drop in the comments what you mean. I'd like to know more about that. I haven't seen that, but maybe you're talking. I need to see that if it's a Scientology related thing. Thanks for bringing that up. Wendy, doing the appropriate question marks. Thank you. Um, where was this stage production held and for what demographic? The demographic is to get the Hollywood Police Department, specifically the PAL, the Police Activities League, to grant them with a check of, at the end of this one, $20,000 to fundraise, to give to the police department. So if Scientology needs to, because they do something called safe pointing, Wendy, which we're going to go into more. It's, it's a little more subtle, but through money, through using their actors and their celebrity center events like this one, they're able to raise $20,000, $50,000 to give over to a mutually beneficial thing that Scientology says, hey, we want to protect the community too, just like you are, Mr. Policeman. So maybe we can combine forces. Look at how lovely our celebrity center is. Don't you want to meet Jason Doring and Seth Green? These are the things that they use to, like I said, you know, unless you have some integrity, most people can be bought off really easily. They get starstruck and shit and they work the shit out of um, these, these poor um, real actors that have to Dude, Jason, I mean, that shit was bad, man. I'm still can't, I, I forgot how bad they were. And again, when I was in the Truman Show bubble, I didn't pick up on any of that pedo innuendo shit. I was just clapping like a fucking penguin like everyone else. I thought it was amazing. Thanks for that question, my friend. Server Serpent, how are you? To the RPF, if they don't laugh. Exactly right. That's not even you, you joking. You got that one, my friend. One more before we roll out of here. This was a fundraiser. Does they give the money to make them stop? Jetta, I wish they would. I would have paid God knows how much to get them to stop. Like I said, there's more to come, um, not just with that upcoming video. That'll probably take a little time to put together because I want to deep dive on it. But there's so much news happening, my friends, and so much to keep up, up on. Um, we shall see you very soon. And... Um, <laughs> Guys, if you don't mind, I really am thinking about not wanting to show kind of shit like that in the future, but at the same time, it's pretty revealing of the stars and I want the information to get out. If you don't want any more of that crap that you just saw in the 10 minutes, let me know and I'll respectfully do clips. I'll edit it so you don't have to suffer through it. Or if you do want to see it, you know, maybe it's important to run it all the, all the way through, even though it's vomit fest shit. My friends, I'll see you very soon. And um, as always, stay safe, stay sane, and most fucking definitely stay cult free. Ideological study and use to break the subject's will or is that the case?